Now in this in this tutorial, we'll see how to handle a event on checkbox. Now you can even even do the event on radio button. So what will be the event on radio button? So the event which is there in on your J button is same as your event on radio button. But for checkbox, it's it's different. For checkbox, the event name is so we'll say we'll add an event. So we'll say C1 dot. So for checkbox, your event is item listener. So for button, it is action listener, and for checkbox, it is item listener. And the interface name here is item listener. So for button, it is action listener, and for checkbox, it is item listener. So we'll use a anonymous class here. Now the method in this anonymous class, let's see what's the method here. So we'll, we'll click on item listener. So item listener is an interface which extends event listener. And in this, we have a method called as item state change. So what we can do is we can go here and we'll provide that method, which is a public void. We'll say item state changed. And in this, we'll provide item event E. And then every time you click on that C1, it should print something. We'll print here, let's say, dancer. So every time you click on C1, it will print dancer. Let's verify if it's working or not. We have to give a semicolon here. So if I run this code now, okay, so this is your GUI. Let's, let me check, instead of typing anything, let me directly check for dancing. And this is my console. Since I'm writing system.out.println, so it will print on the console. So if I click on dancing now, you can see the dancer. So every time I click on dancing, it will, it will call dancer. So that means you can also do, or you can also have events on your checkbox, but the event or the listener name here is item listener, and the event name is item event. And the method is item state change. So that's, that's, that's how you provide events on checkbox.